Thank you very, very much for a lovely introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Thank you for finding time for this afternoon workshop. Uh, my name is Ada Walczykowska, and I'm a freelance creative operations manager and project manager. And I have been working with Monday.com, the system that we will discuss today for many years now. Um, I'm not a part of uh, Monday.com company in any way, and uh, I'm not even their ambassador. I just really love the system. Uh, so I'm going to show you some basics today, and it's not directed to project managers, it's directed to creative uh, producers, editors, uh, everyone who is on the receiving end of the system. And I hope it will indeed open some door uh, to jobs that requ require this skill, basically. So from now on, you don't have to skip these offers anymore. So who am I? Very shortly, uh, I worked for TV on our production for many years. I started back in Warsaw in my hometown. And after a few years, I was relocated to Berlin. Um, in Berlin, I covered many project management roles for different channels in Viacom, um, like MTV, Comedy Central, and mainly Nickelodeon. Uh, it was also my first uh, meet with uh, Paramount Channel. And uh, I grew to a creative operations manager role. Uh, these were my last year in Paramount. And since 2022, I'm self-employed and I work as an external consultant. So I help uh, media companies uh, to uh, work with creative systems, implement them, uh, structure them, and also to simply train uh, employees in how to use them because every system like this is extremely uh, wide with its um, opportunities and it's very hard to know what exactly to use when so uh, this is why experts like us uh, have jobs so i'm very happy about it and i regularly host uh, monday.com uh, trainings for beginners but also advanced users so feel free to reach out to me whenever you need anything like this uh, today we're gonna cover three general topics so very shortly, advantages of project management tools. Why is it such a big deal now? Uh, secondly, we will uh, cover the biggest topic today. So how to use Monday.com when you are working with different clients, because of course, everyone uses project management tools a little bit differently, but the overall um, dynamics are very similar. So once you are starting with one, it's very easy to jump to another one. Then a few general tips that I just find um always as a kind of like additional thing but it's just very helpful to have it in the back of your head and then if there are any questions then i will be happy to try to answer them so we're starting with uh with uh the advantages of uh, project management tools um first of all almost every company and agency right now uses something more than Excel and it's great that they do. Excel is amazing. We all started from Excel and uh, it's a really incredible genius tool, but it has its limitations. And uh, one of the limitations is that the scope of assets we are able to produce as people is limited when you have to do a lot of actions manually. So the more options we can automate, uh, automate and the more we can have repetitive tasks um, done automatically by the system, the more we can concentrate on actual human work, on creativity, on management, on uh, managing the issues as well and, and foreseeing them. And this is what project management tools help us to do. And secondly, this is something that is maybe not uh, a part that uh, systems like this advertise. But I believe that these uh, project management tools also allow creative departments to not be this secret universe anymore, because everyone who is working with creative is having access to the system. So all the other departments and corporations can actually see how much is covered by creative. And they can see this um, the, the previews, they can see the scope, they can see all the production steps there. And this, I believe this is a game changer. It's not anymore some kind of hidden folders somewhere. It's actually very available and very transparent. The second very important feature is what we already have with also share uh, documents, is that you have one version of your 
document, of your make list, of your administration list, whatever you're using the system for. So you don't have copies flying around and no one knows which one is the latest one. You just have one place uh, where everyone can go and it's the only source of truth, which is a huge time saver. And it's not only about the documents, but you can also use monday.com and this is how all the companies I worked with used it as a hub for all the brand assets. So you only have the latest design of your logo, brand guide, etc., in monday.com and you don't have to have it requested anymore by other departments. They can just go there and find what, what they are looking for and they will have surely the most recent version. And uh, how did project management tools change work, communication and the way of working? So monday.com has a pimped Excel structure, basically. It looks like Excel, first of all, but it's a little bit maybe more neat and user friendly. Um, and it has a lot of other features. Um, what is the difference is that when you have in the, let's say, old world, uh, when you had like an Excel make list or a production document and you wanted to share details of it with, let's say, brand director, you had to manually create a um, shorter version of it or even create a chart from it, etc. So you had to manually create a lot of additional documents to share with different stakeholders. With project management tools, everything has a source in the main board and you can create from that automatically with just few clicks you can create different views different shorter versions different filters you can for example share only the stuff that goes to one country with one person and the other country with another person it just doesn't take time anymore to do it and in the end all these filters and versions are still a part of this main document so you're not creating any additional stuff and again you're working on one source of truth this is a huge, huge uh, change for us. And it's a huge time saving for all project managers, of course. And now I'm gonna get to the main part and unless someone has already questions to the first part. I'm gonna assume no. Okay, great. So how do we use monday.com when we work with different clients and with different clients' accounts? Um, I'm gonna show you a few uh, slides that have uh, screenshots of monday.com, but I actually have monday.com opened in the background as well. So I only created these screenshots so that when you maybe later want to go through the presentation again, you can see the system with my notes, but uh, I will also be showing live system in a second. So please don't worry, it's not gonna be all uh, still. And we're gonna cover here the very beginning so how do you start how do you find your information because every client will have a slightly different structure and you have to just know how to find it uh, how do you communicate on monday.com what not to do because it's a very transparent tool and then how to work with uh, actual boards uh, find your items use different views and possibly which automations you can ask your client to set up for you and we're gonna start with the very beginning. So you are invited by your client, you receive your registration email, and what do you do next? So you register and you will see the starting page, which looks exactly uh, like the screenshot here. It might not have all these uh, sections filled out, so it might be a little bit more empty, but the structure of it will be exactly that. So you can see on the left, there is this um, menu with different folders and boards. It's very little that we see, but it's actually going to be very similar for every guest user because you are invited to a big account that is used by a company and you as an external vendor um, and freelancer, you will only be subscribed to certain boards that they want you to work on or, or contribute to. So you will see on the left only the stuff that you are supposed to see. And actually, as an external person uh, to the company, uh, all the boards that you will see are shareable boards. So they have this tiny share icon. Not important right now. I'm gonna leave you this nomenclature in a second, but uh, just giving you a little bit of information here. 
Then in the middle section, we have uh, three sections. First, on top, we have recently visited. Uh, Self-explanatory, these are the boards I just recently looked at. And it's, of course, life-changing. Then underneath, we have update feed, or it used to be called inbox. One of the most important features of Monday.com. I'm going to go through it uh, in a moment. And on the upper right corner, we have a menu with different icons. First, from the left, is a bell icon for notifications. Second is the update feed. So exactly the same what you see in the middle. You see also a shortcut uh, to it with this little icon. And then finally, our profile is on the upper right corner. Uh, there is uh, our picture. And if you don't use a picture, there will be like first letters of your name and surname. And this is where you can find your settings. We will also go through it in a second. So this is the very beginning. and everything that you are going to work on is going to be on these boards on the left there is no other universe in monday.com it only are it, it is only these documents that we have here so you don't have to worry that there is a part of some other structure that you can't find this is honestly just this very simple structure if there are any questions uh when i like speak now please please interrupt me and i will try to answer them now, this very basic uh, naming convention that is used in Monday.com, I'm going to go through it fast. You don't have to remember it now. Again, you can come back to this presentation later. So what we have on Monday.com are uh, what the documents that we are using. They are called boards. They are three types of boards. I'm going to come to it in a second, but they look the same. So the very basic board is a table structure, and they will always first be a board, uh, sorry, a table. And um, the only difference between Excel and um, and Monday is that this table has a lot of uh, automated and filtered features. So first of all, you have different types of columns that have different functions, and these functions allow you to set up different automations. Secondly, there is also a sub-item level um, view. So you have on the top level when you enter to the board you see only the items so these rows are items but you can also create or open sub items for every item and sub items have also table uh, structure so nothing is changed um, changes here but the columns from sub items and items are not the same they are not connected to each other unless you want to connect them so they are two separate universes that's why you can for example group certain things under certain things. So for example, you can have like here an item that is called out of home and underneath you have all the assets for out of home. That's just an example. Um, then um, the first column of every board in monday.com and this will never like, I mean, maybe it will change, but it's for every single call, uh, for every single board, the very first column is always a text column and it always has the update uh, bubble in here. This is where you can write messages. We're going to get to messages in a second, but uh, this is the only place you can actually communicate with other users. There is no other communicator available. There is no DM option on monday.com. And these messages that you will leave here are always attached to the sub item or item where you wrote it. So when you wrote to someone and you tagged them, they will receive the message in the inbox. So in here, and they can click on it and they will end up on our board and they will end up in here and they will see exactly where you left the message. So uh, they can also answer from inbox or from here. It's basically exactly the same. Inbox is just like a central hub for messages. There is no other option for sending messages. So these messages, are usually used for briefing about certain asset, approval process, questions about it, questions honestly depending on what the board is about because the board can be a make list, but it can also be a finance overview or something like this. So maybe someone just wants to leave a comment here. These messages will always be attached here and you cannot detach them. They can't be just flying in the air. You can of course delete them and then they just disappear. Um, and from 
Uh, one more thing about the board structure, not super important, but just so you know the naming. Every board, and I'm gonna now show you how it looks like in the system. So every board has different uh, groups. Uh, can you please just say that you see monday.com? Yes. Great. So every board uh, has separate uh, groups. You can, of course, have um, a board that has only one group. That's also absolutely fine. So let's say that your client invited you to a board that looks like this. This is a group. This is a group. This is an item, 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 item. And here we have our sub items. This is our whole structure. And I'm going to go back to our presentation. Here. Great. So uh, next thing, not super important for you, but just so you know, because a lot of people don't know it when they are working with the system and then they don't know why certain things don't work. What I said earlier, you will be invited to the client's account as a guest, which means you can only, only, only be added to shareable boards. If your client is struggling with adding you to something, you can inform them that this is the problem. A lot of people forget about it. And they would, for example, create main or private board. They are only for employees who are paid memberships of the system. So you can just use this knowledge uh, to show off a little bit. And uh, on shareable board, you can have both external guests and internal members, and they have exactly the same uh, access and visibility, and they can all do the same actions. So actually guests are also able to de de delete stuff, change stuff, etc. Only on the most, um, on the highest uh, level of monday.com, I think it's, um, what is it called? Pro, no, even more, uh, enterprise. Um, there is a blockage uh, that is possible to, to be set up for guests that they can't delete stuff, for example. But a part of this, most accounts have this possibility. And now the communication. So what I already started talking about, you see your board where your client invited you and you don't know where to look exactly. So it will, of course, look always a little bit different. There will be different columns used. Uh, maybe the content of these columns will also be different, but you will be able to probably read more or less what is there so is this a make list that is um having i don't know all the items grouped together that you're supposed to produce or answer to or is this a very detailed make list where every asset is separate in any case when you see this document you can ask questions regarding each of the item using the update bubble or communication bubble and when you click on it it will open the window that you see here on the right and this is an example of a message that someone sent. So as you can see, this person has tagged other users. They have like sent a message and they also attached an image. You can attach up to 500 megabytes um, previews uh, screeners images, not only to the update feed, but also to relevant files column. Um, it's always best to upload only small files and really small screeners simply Money.com gets slower if you will upload heavy files. And I mean, heavy is also up to 500 megabytes. And one thing that you have to know about messaging and transparency here, you wrote this message, let's say to one particular person, everyone else who is on this board is able to see it. This is a transparency thing that we have uh, on Monday.com is that you can't hide messages on the board if the board has subscribers of, I don't know, 200 people, all of them can see it. They will not get any notification about it and they will have to proactively go and like read it, but they are able to see it. What you can see as the person who sent the message, but also other people can see it, is who saw your message. So let's say that you wrote to your client that, hey, this is super urgent, can you approve it? And then, Two hours later, you go to Monday and you see that no one saw this message. And then you might think like, OK, did I tag the person? So you can correct your message and tag them because maybe they didn't get the notification. But um, you can also then 
maybe contact them via Slack or email because maybe simply they are not checking monday.com or they have some connection issues or something like this, but you know they didn't see it for sure. So uh, this will inform you if they saw it on their phone, on the, on the web, etc. So you know if they maybe just were scrolling through stuff and they saw it. Um, and even if they didn't answer, you can be basically certain that, okay, they saw it, so now it's in their field. And if you are only opening your account and you prefer to check your messages from the inbox, this is also possible, you will see exactly the same. So you see here the preview of both, like the same message, but sent um, and visible in a slightly different way. And in both cases, you can see all this information, who saw it, who answered to it, what did they answer, etc. Is this clear so far? Or maybe is it not clear if someone wants to answer this? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so, again, you are invited to your client's account and uh, there are maybe not only three or four boards, but even if they are, maybe they are very big and you simply don't know how to find your assets. So there are two features that are extremely useful if you are very new to this account. Uh, first of all, you don't have to go to any board. You just click on my work on the upper left corner. It will show you um, everything you are assigned to. So everywhere where you are in the people's column, if you are there, you will have this item visible here. And uh, what I highlighted here is that you can also filter this view using different uh, options. So this is a live filter. If during your viewing, a client assigns you to more assets, this view will update. If they remove you, it will update as well. This is super cool. Um, and if you, for example, work only on one board and you don't need to use my work feature, you can also search for yourself um, using the filter on the visible in the right window. So there is actual person filter on every board. You click on it, you choose your avatar, and suddenly you see all the assets and sub-items that you are assigned to. But this is not the only uh, option when it comes to filtering. There is many more options for filtering, and we are going to get to it because this is also one of the coolest features, and it's uh, making our work much easier, especially when we are working in a huge on a huge project. So. One thing that is very cool, you're probably not going to be producing these, but I just want to show you the advantage of the system, is that um, when you have a board that looks like a table, this is our source document. And you can create charts out of it because these charts are reading data from this first table. So you can see here that um, our board, which is called yearly plan, has the main table view. Next to it, it has a gun chart view and here a chart. It's all reading from main table. These are not separate um, documents and it's live reading as well. So if we change anything on our table, these charts will also update. And we can also change these charts by uh, change these charts by changing what they are actually featuring. So here we are featuring types of assets. So we have five promos, five graphics and three items. And here we have a division by platform. So we know that we produce one promo for TV, four for digital, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a game changer that I mentioned earlier. Suddenly this information that we have on this big board and it can have thousands of sub items and items can be easily changed into a visual chart. This is something I spent years on working and we had to always count these assets manually. It was a nightmare whole department was counting, it was always different um, results. And then, for example, a boss was coming up with a new idea of yet another thing we have to count differently. So, true nightmare. And right now this is done and we can just be lazy and just do two clicks, export charts. These charts can also be exported daily and then you can have like a progress on the project but you can also simply create this view it will be changing every every time something changes on our table and it can be broadcasted for uh, let's say directors that have to check it so they can just go to the site and see it every time and they will not be able to edit anything but they can just you know see it and appreciate it 
basically. So very, very cool feature. A part of uh, charts, there are a lot of other visual options on monday.com. You can also have all images view. So you can, for example, have uh, previews to all the assets that we have here, and you can open a view that will show you only these previews. Great overview for every campaign, for example, if you want to have all in one um, a view. You can have a calendar view, gun chart mentioned before, Kanban, uh, etc. And these are, again, just views and filters. These are not separate documents. And coming to our filters, which I have been like repeating all the time. Uh, so you are working on a big project. And let's say that you are a producer that is responsible for one of the markets. And our project is going for 10 markets. You don't necessarily want to scroll through all the other markets all the time. So using the filter button, you can actually filter for your stuff. So you can choose the country if, of course, this column exists on your make list. If it doesn't, you can create it or ask your client to create it. And not only filtering for country, you can also, of course, have many countries here, but also, for example, for the status. So you can only see the assets you're currently working on. And a part of this, you can add even more filters. It can be about the date. It can be uh, about... Uh, who is the creative lead for it. And I'm gonna show you this super fast right now. So we have the main table here. This is our main board. And we are we have already created a view that is called Poland. Um, if you don't see my cursor, I'm on the um, upper section uh, clicking on Poland right now. So you can see that the filter here says country is Poland and I wanna see everything for Poland and for France, let's say. And we're going to check if it works. So you can see that in our sub items, we only see stuff that is going for Poland and France. And now we're going to add more information. Like we also want the status to be, uh, for example, in approval only. And suddenly we only have, sorry, this was the status for the item. We're going to go to the sub item level. So we want to see everything for approval. And now we see only the assets here that are for Poland, France, and for approval. And we want to see the stuff that has a uh, deadline. Maybe oh, everything is in July on my board, so I'm not going to, or maybe I yeah, passed. Uh, well, this didn't work, sorry. Well, it would work if I would update my dates here, but uh, this is uh, maybe not set up correctly but we can maybe go to something different. So we can say that the lead is, for example, Jean-Louis Picard. And here we have our filtered view. We can save it like that. So suddenly this view is now Poland, France for approval with Jean-Louis Picard as a creative lead. And you can always jump between these views. What is really important is that these are not private views so when you set it up it's gonna be it's gonna be visible for everyone else who is on the board it's not a problem uh, they can also use your filtered view and they can also save their own views usually project managers after a while they are looking at what views have been created and they are cleaning some of them because sometimes people create and create and create the same view over and over again it's physically possible in any case, all the views will be visible in this upper section. So you can always go through them and check what has been created here, how does it look like, et cetera, et cetera. Is this clear so far? How do you feel, guys? <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Uh, OK, we're going back to our presentation. And uh, now the, oh, uh, please. I don't know how to pronounce, how to pronounce your name. Is this uh, Gavash? Ah, yes. Thank Hello. You. So I have a question uh, right now. I'm located in North America. So, uh, so how, like, you know, right, there are already competitors available. Jira, ServiceNow, Raik are already there and who does the same work as Monday CRM project management do. So when we go to the client, how we can approach that, like, Monday.com is different because 
uh, based on the customization if you i just noticed that you told you say that if you want to add additional filter or anything filled you can just talk with the client and you can ask them to add but in jira or some other cases even if story is not created it automatically created if that is a different than for example particular field value is different than the other fields uh, which are presented already field value but it automatically allowed user to you know add that value so that is like uh, if that user is scrum master or for example project manager or technical architect uh, uh, yes based on the role but yeah it allows it not allows just to client it allows to team members as well some of the team members so uh, is there any documentation that i can go through you know where i can read more about this absolutely How exactly absolutely. and other community sessions like uh, like every month or something we can attend uh, I don't know about the regular uh, sessions, but uh, Monday.com actually has a lot of uh, pre-recorded tutorials. But if you're looking, because from what I understand, you're looking for something that is much more specific and much more advanced uh, as a documentary. Yeah, much like, and, and yeah, right, correct. Because I wanted to know how much uh, Monday.com supports, especially transformation, like when you migrate from one application to Monday CRM and on Monday, Monday project management or service. Uh, and the second one is how much deep Monday.com can go to integrate with, you know, outside, outside applications. There is, there is because if you go government sectors, they have pretty old application. Those are like running like since 20 years, like more than 20 years. Of Those course. are pretty old. And uh, there is a lot of integrations between Monday.com and the systems you mentioned, like Jira, for example, uh, because um, very often companies, like my client's company, for example, is using both Monday.com and Airtable, and there is an integration for these tools. Um, but of course, the integration for most cases actually looks like a, sort of like a broadcasting. So you would mm. use have the board in monday.com that is integrated let's say with airtable and then you just see the broadcast of airtable it's not mm -hmm. exactly an integration um mm -hmm. and um all the integrations on monday.com and there are like thousands of different features are available mm -hmm. through a marketplace so you can also mm -hmm. see um this is definitely available on their website which options are uh, available there um but in every case, I would always first test it before making any decision, because sometimes an integration is not really an integration. It's it's only like a possible glance at something else, which is not really helping us so, in any way. So, yeah, I can I can give you an example. For example, uh, when I work at like uh, my past company, I, I work at VMware, if you know VMware. So we used to have a VMware Partner Connect. <laughs> And you know, as Monday.com, we used to have something called uh, Rike, and so they used to fetch dashboard from them. So we used to fetch dashboard, particular URL we used to call from uh, to Salesforce Apex, and we used to fetch that you know, particular dashboard, and it used to say, see if you see community portal and the, the right, it used to see same, like same color, same everything, same. It used to same it is to face same as it is so those kind of integration i'm more interested in which is secure and sso through sso or multi-factor which user can you know log into community portal or their connect student connect or partner connect or customer connect so they can view that uh, those things uh, let us uh, let me connect so with... we can reduce the you know we can reduce the licensing cost for them we don't have to give access to of course uh, let yeah. me let me contact you later on uh, you know do not slack and maybe i can send you some links for checking that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's okay yes great thank you very much that was a really great question already mm -hmm. so thank you for being so proactive uh, i'm going to move to one of the last uh, things we have on the presentation which is super cool you will not have to set it up as an external user but it's going to be uh, really helpful if your client sets it up for you. These are automations. 
And this is something that uh, I said earlier, uh, that there are certain columns in our board that are really game changer, and these are status, date, and person columns. These three allow you to create so many different automations and reminders, and uh, these can be used for all repetitive actions. The ones that I find absolutely number one for every single type of production and work are these two that I highlighted here. First is the second one. So when status changes to something, do something. This is the ultimate automation. It's so basic and it's so helpful because it can be used for so many different uh, features. Like when status changes to approved, um, notify the delivery team. If uh, status changes to for approval, notify the art director or creative lead. If status changes to approved, notify the producer or editor. If status changes to cancelled, notify everyone on the board. Uh, if status changes to something, move the asset somewhere or delete it or create a new one. It's honestly like there are so many options here and it's the simplest thing ever. And uh, this is something that when you are on the receiving end of the board and when you see these um, these items assigned to you and you are not getting notifications about some changes, you might ask your client, hey, when status changes to, let's say, uh, approved, can you set up an automation for me so I will receive it? And they don't have to do it with your name, they do it with your role, and you are going to be assigned under certain role, let's say editor, agency, graphic designer, or something like this. So they can do exactly what I did here. Here I put the role of art director, but it can be any other. So everyone on the board of your client who will be assigned under this role will be receiving a notification when their item has changed. This is number one. And number two is the top one. So when date arrives and if status is or is not something, notify someone. This is a reminder. This is a really, again, super useful thing. And this is uh, this automation saves thousands of messages every month for media companies, because this is exactly what all the project managers always write. Like, hey, your asset is due in four days and it's not delivered. Can you tell me what's going on? And of course, this, these automations don't uh, mean that we will stop communicating. We still have a lot of discussions and creative approvals, etc. But these are these repetitive messages that we have to send all the time. And if someone, for example, doesn't answer to this, then you can actually like reach out on Slack and check what's going on. But uh, it can also be just like a really helpful reminder because the producer might just be busy with something else. And it uh, can also be a reminder to other people. So you can have a notify editor and notify project managers and notify requester or whoever you want to notify how many days before. So these two are absolutely the best. And um, going back to our board, just to show you maybe here. So basically, as I said, status, person, date, you will always, probably always, have them on every board. And the most important one is status, because this is repetitive data. When you are working on any project, and uh, I'm going to go to our system. When you are working on any project, and you are working on certain assets, you want to make sure that 100% of the time, when something is in the approval status, let's say, everybody understands exactly what it means. Everybody understands that this is the moment when, for example, creative director has to approve it or someone else has to approve it. When it's done, it's done. This is always a certain, like 100% certainty of the status. Imagine that the status column was text. Everybody could write whatever they think is uh, relevant for this. And for example, for status that is delivered or done, they could be like, writing ended, finished, takes, implemented, ingested. They can also use their local um, like native language. You would never be able to say what is going on with this project? Where is it actually? And in this way, with just like one glance, you can see immediately like, okay, three things approved, four things working on, etc. 
this is making everyone's life so much easier. But of course, agreeing on these steps of the project is something that the client has to do before, and it has to be very clear. My, adv uh, my advice for project managers is always to try to keep it as uh, simple as possible and as little statuses as possible, let's say maximum seven, eight, because the more you add, the more people will not be using them. That's simply our psychology. So it's better to be a little bit more relaxed than over um, controlling in this way. And it's not only, of course, for us to see the project, but statuses are also allowing us to filter for them. So if there is a status that is assigned to you, let's say your status is starting when it's working on it, then you can filter for that and you always see the stuff that you're working on. And when you change the status to for approval, it will disappear from your view, but it will, it will of course remain in the main table. So you can still go back to it. I hope I'm not making uh, saying anything that makes you feel dizzy. Okay, we were here. So some general tips for the for the big finish is that uh, you have been invited to your client's account and uh, you are working on a project, but maybe you are a part of an external creative team and working with three, four other people and they are all invited to client's account. You can ask your client to set up a team of your uh, of your team basically and name it with a project name let's say that your project is spongebob new episode sweden uh, so you can ask your client to set up a group that will be called uh, spongebob agency or something like this and this will allow your client and you to first of all assign the whole team on the board so you don't have to assign um, only one person like here we have like singular people basically but you can have the whole team and it will also just be one avatar and not only this but also if your team changes and you for example add one person or one person leaves the project you can then remove them from the team but the rest of the team is still assigned there this is extremely useful and extremely helpful it might seem like it's not a, a big of a deal it's only three or four people but when you are every day communicating with people and they have to tag you they will always have to tag five people in a row this is really painful on some point so it's just better to make our lives a little bit easier and setting up teams can be also of course simply for like departments it can be project-based, what I just said before, it can be also role-based. So if you are working with few art directors, you can just create our director team and then they will all be tagged. Again, saving our time. The second thing I wanna show you here is what always gives uh, headaches to everyone who starts working with monday.com is when you delete something, what happens there? Of course, you can't just do control Z, it doesn't work here, but we are gonna do a little test here and we're gonna delete stuff and first of all you can see here we can undo it for like 10 seconds so I can just click here I undid it it's back our line is back but let's say you didn't notice that you deleted something because this is what usually happens we are deleting something below and we don't see that something else was marked above it's gone and then the next day you're looking for it and it's like where is it where is my test item so you go to the upper right corner to your profile and there is a thing called trash you go in here it's loading and now you can retrieve sorry restore the item that you just removed it's back on our board and it's actually on the top of it so this was very easy we didn't lose anything the only thing that will not work this way is if you have a text column and let's say that we do have a text column on our board and we are writing something like this and then by accident it's a longer text let's say it's a briefing and you don't want to lose it but you deleted it there is no way to put it back so this doesn't end up in the trash because we didn't delete any item so what we can do is that every board has a activity log and you can go um, below your picture, there are these three dots, you go to the activity log and you can see here that this is the text that has been deleted. You copy it, you put it back where it belongs. 
So these are two ways to go back to what you deleted. So please don't worry. There are 30 days to go uh, into the trash bin and uh, find what you lost. And finally, the very, very last thing, so your profile setting, which is something you will be doing in the beginning. But now that you know a little bit about the system, I think it will be clearer why uh, I'm giving you these advices. So um, your name. Uh, we are working in an extremely international world right now, and uh, we are working with people from all around the world. And uh, a lot of alphabets have different uh, special characters and accents. And this is a problem for Monday.com. It's uh, unfortunately, uh, Monday.com doesn't recognize that A and A with an accent is the same letter. So if your name, if your first name especially has accents, you can of course have them, but people will not be able to tag you unless they know about the accent and unless they have this keyboard. Uh, so this is a little bit of a problem, and I actually even created uh, this uh, to, just to show you really fast why it is a problem. I created a name with an accent, so our um, character, the board where he's not added, yes, exactly. So. We don't have this character added yet, so I'm going to add him now. So I'm trying to add Jean-Luc Picard. And like, as you can see, he's not there. Even though we just saw him, it's because the E in his name has an accent. This is the problem. It's, of course, not a problem for Jean, but we, if we want to attack him, we have to remember that there is an accent, maybe for the system, because it will simply not see him. And uh, this is why my advice is, unfortunately, until uh, Monday.com changes this, is not to use special characters in your first name. Um, this is not cool, but Monday.com didn't learn this lesson yet. So this is where we are right now. And the very last thing is notification settings, because when you are starting to work on a new uh, account, your notification settings will be uh, set up in a way that you receive emails about everything. And this is very painful. So to change it, you go to your profile, you click on my profile tab. And on the left, there is a menu with notifications. This is where you change it. So if it's your client account, and let's say you have a lot of clients, then you should keep email notifications because you might simply not get all the updates on time and you will have to be jumping between different accounts. But if you are working for one client for let's say half a year and it's like your daily job almost, then it's worth to just switch them all off unless you love receiving emails because these emails will be exactly what you are receiving in monday.com already and they will not even have the details. So what you will receive is that there was an action taken on your item. Go and go to the system and check what it was not super helpful unless you just really want this kind of like a wake-up call um so thank you very 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 much and that was all from my side um i was trying not to get too much into details because i know it's a lot but i hope it will be helpful when you're like applying for projects and um, there is a requirement for any project management tool again they are different but they are very similar and I believe that once you like got into one, you can easily get into more. And one last thing, is it worth it for freelancers to buy access to the system and learn on it? No, it's not. Um, it's worth to, if you really wanna test it, you should sign in and test it for the test phase, which is like 14 days. Don't buy it because you will not use it. And uh, it's worth it to like spend these two weeks getting into it, but actually, it is so much easier to learn on a real project than on an empty account. Because on an empty account, you simply just don't know what to do. And when you have a live project, you can actually interact with it. So don't buy it until like you will have a real project going on or unless you're like a superstar freelancer that has 100 clients and you wanna put them in your board and just have order with them. So do you guys have any questions or comments or something? A question. Thank you very much. That was great. Okay, well. Um, uh, how are you? 
I'm, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Um, when it comes to changing workflow tools, you know, like like I, I went on to Monday and, and it's great. And, and I did the 14 day and right. looked at it and played around. And I was like, I, I, I planned my whole house renovation. But yeah, I didn't just carry on looking at it. <laughs> but um, how do you convince freelancers or how do you convince your creatives to actually start to embrace the tool more? Because, you know, I, the amount of times I get told that it's not a creative's job to do admin, it's it's amazing, you know, and, and how do you actually convince them to, to use it? Because everybody has very specific ways that they like to work, and even producers, you know, you know, just like getting people to upload things in a consistent way can be an issue. Absolutely. So um, I, I hear you. It's definitely a challenge sometimes. But um, what I found is that uh, if you do a proper introduction, which is like one hour for your creative team, and yeah. they start using it, they really embrace it. Because uh, first of all, uh, depending on how big the scope of the project is, they can suddenly filter for their stuff. So it's just making their life a little bit easier because stuff is not all over the place. They are not receiving uh, email make list, which is like the nightmare of my life. Uh, <laughs> like copy number 10 of the make list or something like this. Uh, but yeah. secondly, uh, they can also easily see all the approval communication there. It's actually very so this is a big advantage. Um, but what I find most helpful is that everybody loves status changing. It's just such a I mean level for everyone when it's approved and the producer sees it, it's making their day beautiful. Of course, this is not something you can maybe tell them when they start working, but when they are using it, it's it's a help. And what I have used in the past when we were launching Monday.com for a big company and uh, creatives were very happy about it because we know how hard it is to work with Excel and share documents yes. with different versions. People delete stuff. You don't even know who deleted it, etc. Uh, so creatives were very happy, but we had to launch it uh, across a lot of departments. And there were a lot of comments about it that this is just a creative system. Why do we have to learn it, etc.? So we started the training saying, give it a chance for a month. If you hate it, we will look at it again. But I'm going to give you now like a two hours tour and I'm going to really show you all the cool features. And people love different filters and views. This is what always uh, sells it. But then I said, please kindly now use it for a month and don't come to us for a month. No questions. If you have a question, try to solve it because it usually it will be very easily solvable and it will be less frustrating. And if you do have a question, still write it down. In one month, we meet for a session with every yeah. department again, and then we read all the questions. And there were no questions after a month. This saves us because we gave people the opportunity like, OK, you can protest, but give it a chance first, and then we will see if it's still a problem. And um, it's of course it's hard to say because I don't know what might be the other like negative uh, negative uh, fears <laughs> about the system. I mean I can only I mean not that it's only positive stuff because of course it also has its limitations. But I think most people were very happy about it, especially for example creatives because they can filter for their stuff, so they yeah. don't have to see everything, which is always a pain if you have to scroll yeah. through. Cetera, and they can do these filters themselves. They don't have to ask project manager to do it for them. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you have other other like examples what people might hate <laughs> because then I can answer it. No, no, it's it's just in in general, you know, having to change a, a workflow tool is not an easy thing to do oh, yeah. when, when people are are set in their ways. Absolutely. You know, some people generally started a company and they learn from somebody else. So it's just interesting to see. I mean, it is a really user-friendly system. There are no two ways about that. It's just about adoption because people, you know, they like what they know. But for this argument, I actually always um, try to say that indeed it's great that people are like no other systems because it's already giving them some kind of like a backup knowledge. But yeah. Um, we always have to imagine that our situation might change. We might be fired. We might change our jobs, etc. And then it's actually better to know more systems. That's yeah, it. That's it gives you a better situation on the market. 
yeah, this is true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if there are no more questions, then. Um... I would like to thank you so, so much for finding time and joining me today.